he, I think, comes across as an artist who doesn't just speak one visual language, but many. Uh, and on the one hand, he's full of the unexpected and uh, the fantastic, um, the improbable. Uh, on the other hand, he also speaks a very human language, uh, one that one could ex uh, describe best as a visual vernacular. So even the most solemn of compositions are filled with little particles of the lived, of the everyday. He has a gift for making the ordinary seem extraordinary. And he, uh, at the same time, invests uh, the extraordinary, in the case of both the pious and the pagan, with little hints of everyday life to make them all the more immediate and to draw the viewer in, uh, both then and now. Even though it's one central scene, the visitation, Piero invites you into the panel. He leads the eye of the worshiper, of the spectator, throughout the picture. So you see many more scenes than just the primary. The two saints on either side, St. Nicholas and St. Anthony Abbott, and their attributes. For example, St. Anthony Abbott, just beyond him is a wild pig, which was one of his attributes, and he holds, uh, there's a crutch, and he's wearing spectacles. And little did we know that there were spectacles in 15th century Florence. We don't really know if he knew how to read or not. Um, he probably could read uh, Italian, he could read uh, uh, you know, the vernacular, but we don't know for sure if he could read Latin. And that would have been the text primarily that would have given him these stories. So either he was a very good reader or he was a very good listener. So we don't know if he could actually read the stories or if the stories were just told to him. One thing is certain, uh, that he had a very um, active and wonderfully strange sense of fantasy, uh, and that his imagination and the way that he um, imbued his paintings with, um, again, both the human and the divine, um, the everyday and, uh, and the extraordinary, uh, the extraordinarily strange.